Good day guys, MF West here and again another PvP video and before you roast me I want to give you guys an explanation quickly before the video starts. Uh, about halfway through all there I quit raiding uh, due to not being able to find the right guilds and IRL commitments. I am back into raiding 100% like I used to back in the day with making boss guides for all the bosses in Dazzle Law is my plan. Dazzle Law, however you pronounce it. In 8.2 which is in like 16 days I'm going to be doing if I will be actually getting into Mythic Plus a lot more next season, I was really into it at the beginning of the season, and then it, as everyone's seen, it's just kind of dropped off. The dungeon's too difficult, the affixes aren't working, and it's just nowhere near as fun as it was in Legion. So, hopefully, they provide incentives for M Plus so I actually get motivated to do it. Otherwise, I've enjoy been enjoying PvP a lot more than any other content right now. But I'm back in an old guild now, and I think that I think 8.2 is going to be better than 8.1 in general. So, today's video is going to be about my road to around almost 2,400 and 2s. So, I've been basically mixing around with different healers, but Mistweaver is the heal that I've been having the most fun with. Now, the guide is going into detail about how to play against different comps that you will encounter on the road to 2,400, and that's basically the video. So, the main comps that I came up against were Fury Warrior, Mistweaver. Unfortunately, all my three, I had three clips against good Mistweaver Fury Warrior teams, and they didn't work. They got deleted. I don't know what happened. I was so pissed. Uh, I've got games against Windwalker H Pally, I think, is a very, very strong comp, and Ellie Shaman H Pally and Rogue Disc. Those are the three comps that I came a lot up against on the way from 22 to 24. Now, in terms of talents, I do want to say that there is no cookie cutter spec. If you want to see the main spec for 2v2 on Holy, I made a guide on it like literally a week ago, two weeks ago. Go check it out. But for, for specific matchups, uh, let's just say against H Pally, Windwalker, the Windwalker will always gun for the Mistweaver because of how well Windwalker counters Mistweaver. You would basically want to replace Lichborn with Necrotic Aura because you're going to be going for the H Pallet the entire game and you're peeling as much as you can for your healer. Uh, Road Disc, I like to go Spell Eater, especially sometimes Disc Priest runs Schism and you need to be AMSing Schism at all costs and a lot of the Rose damage is uh, uh, magic, so you can, the poison damage, so you can. You can uh, defend against it with Spell Eater and AMS, and it brings down, sorry, it increases your AMS, so it's really good for when your healer gets in CC. But most of the time, rogues are going to be killing your healer. For Arms Warrior, if, um, the clip that I have of, the, of Arms Warrior and Mistweaver is pretty much this comp here, guys. Uh, I like to run Lichborn. Again, Majority of the time, Warrior will kill Mistweaver. If they go you, you're at a, a pretty big advantage, but I just like being able to get out of leg sweeps almost on every one of their leg sweeps I can get out of it, or fear. So it's like an extra trinket basically to secure the kill on the Monk or the Warrior, whatever we're going against at the point in time. So without further ado, again, if you have any questions about what to do or how to play Unholy, I have it all in my on my channel. Just type in keywords into the search engine about what you want to know. It's all there, especially pet management. A lot of you guys have questions about how to control your pet. I have a video on that that's about a year old and it's still relevant. Check it out. Let's get into the clips. Alright guys, so the first arena we're playing against uh, Mistweaver and Arms Warrior. Now normally uh, you would come across Fury, but Arms I honestly think is a much easier uh, matchup mainly due to the fact that they are not immune to snares so Chains of Ice allows us to control them and you're gonna see me basically just keep constant pressure up on this warrior that Mistweaver never ever actually tops him off so we get a huge sap leg sweep on these guys and that forces Cocoon early on now my monk is running Song of Chiji which is great so we can set up some asphyxiated songs uh, combinations so basically all I'm trying to do in this arena guys is keep the warrior off my monk because they can with crane and just a warrior cooldown they can kill my monk in a leg sweep especially if he hasn't got brew up or anything so I do a really good grip here uh, to stop him connecting there and it's just things like that gripping every single charge slowing or pet leaping every leap things like that will win you the game so he, he turns on me here and I get hit pretty hard and we have to trade off um, some damage here but it's okay the song of Chiji misses and we're just keeping constant pressure up on this warrior now the monk actually manages to not use cocoon which is amazing for us and 
uh, the monks go there, get sapped, which is great, and we're just keeping constant pressure up. So I'm going to mind freeze that heal and looking to grip the next one, I believe. And just the monk, the, mo the fact that the monk doesn't top the warrior off just gives us a huge advantage in this matchup. So I'm going to grip this heal here, which is great. And here it looks like it's bad. The warrior does connect, is going to connect with my monk, but the whole thing just changes with a really good play by the monk. And again, due to him being half HP, it's just easy to secure a kill like this. So I popped out Abomination here because I thought that I could keep him in range of me. Yep, on an Abomination here on the stairwell. He jumps off after my healer. The monk's like spazzing out on my screen. So he gets a huge leg sweep here. Now, I'm going to go for a pet kick and then I'm going to pet stun the warrior and then mind freeze the monk for the kill. Now, the reason why I pet stun here when he's like going when I'm going for the kill is so he can't shout. So I, I pet stun him and he shouts out of the pet stun and by then I already have two necrotics and that's enough to secure the kill. Rallying doesn't matter because he has like a 35k necrotic shield on him. So that's the matchup there. Much easier than Fury Warrior guys but good arms warriors can make that really painful. Now our next game we have a mirror matchup. Now this map is the worst to play against Miss Weavers on. It's horrible. Okay, and the Mistweaver makes one single mistake in the game, and honestly, Mistweavers have it pretty nice. They've got a one-minute cocoon cooldown if they if they choose to, and just the way the crane is bonkers. So the monk gets away from me here, and both our monk healers are pretty low on on mana. Uh, he dispels this on a Chigi on the DK. Now here, I pop cooldowns, abomination. I look for an apocalypse, and he's in big trouble. He has to run away. Now, he's going to go for a port, and I'm going to grip it straight away. Now, if he had one global, he should have rolled away. And he should have made sure that I wasn't in range. So now, I'm going to put him into a full asphyxiate, followed up by, again, mind freeze, pet kick, and then he's just dead. It's that simple. One mistake from the monk, and he is going to go down. you got to take like, opportunity of every single, like, yeah. Single, if, it, if that happens, you can't let him recover. So... I moved my pet out for the pet kick, and he's just screwed, he's locked out, so that's GG. And yeah, horrible map for Miss Weaver, and it just comes down to which monk makes the first mistake, to be honest, guys. Now, this is one of the harder, harder matchups that I played on the way to about 2400, and I think that the Windwalker... Windwalkers are doing very, very good right now. I would actually put them as one of the best melees in arena right now due to the fact that they can handle misweavers so well so my strategy here is to literally just kill the paladin at all costs get through his two bops and kill him now i get through the two bops quite quickly and the other thing that you have to be doing is keeping chains of ice on the monk at all times if he tiger lusts you have to chains of ice immediately afterwards you have to immobilize him as much as you can try to grip that fist of fury off him there things like gripping leg sweeps or gripping his serpent kicks are huge you need to look out for those opportunities so that leaves you with not many options to actually grip the paladin so you have to use your pet immobilization as a means to connect with the paladin and uh, hand of freedom is so obnoxious so it's quite difficult to keep up with the paladin but as you can see here i've already got one bop from this pally and i'm pushing through his cooldowns very very quickly mostly due to him just being kicked and just me timing my CDs quite well. So here again I'm wailing on him with my abomination, put a full stun on him and he is going to uh, actually survive that. Now my pet goes around the corner and I use a pet stun to stop him from healing. So that was very 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 important and now my abomination is going to connect with him and he is forced to bubble guys. So now he only has he pretty much has nothing left, guys. He's been through two bops in a bubble, and now is my opportunity to kill him. Monk did an amazing transfer there. That was very good. And, yeah, my Monk's doing quite quite a good job, and now it's my turn to just finish up this Paladin. Now, Pallies, honestly, it's going to come down to a skill matchup of how well you can kick this Paladin and how well you can just, you know, dish out damage during your stuns. It's really straightforward. As you can see here, he's struggling. The monk's trying to actually connect with me, and he doesn't. And Pally is going to go down right about now. There's nothing he could have done. Uh, I still had pet immobile, like pet leap, pet, pet interrupt, and mind freeze. So, GG. That's the game there. Really tough comp due to how well Windwalker monks counter Miss Weavers. Now, this priest rogue, I think our comp counters them pretty, pretty hard. Now, priest get destroyed guys. Priests get absolutely annihilated by unholy DKs right now and it's just it's pretty gross. So the rogue does a really good job of just peeling me off 
during my Dark Transformation, which is kind of annoying, but I still have a way to connect with this priest. Now, the priest is not fucking around, he immediately paints up my Apocalypse and Abomination connects, which is perfectly fine. As you can see there, a 70 to 80% paints up. I have no problems with that. Now, again, like the Windwalker Monk, you're keeping the Rogue off your Mistweaver. You're gripping kidneys, you're slow, keeping him perma chains of ice the whole game. That will make your monk's life so well. So he kicks my monk there, and that would have been the kill, but I grip it off, and now we have a chance. He even cloaks because he wants this kill so badly, so that's good to know. And yeah, if you can grip kidney and vendettas, even stun vendettas, you're gonna you're gonna win the game. It's gonna be just too much pressure on your side compared to their side. Now I do make a few mistakes here. Uh, I use my kicks a bit willy nilly, and I get a full MC over to the other side here, you're going to see this coming up here now guys, but the priest is struggling to top himself, which is comp completely fine, uh, I'm going to move, I mind freeze that heal, and then I'm going to uh, death grip him out of the bubble, but unfortunately there's a glitch right now where if you, if you put your monk ring over the dome, and I grip him at the same time, it teleports him back into the, the ring, it's stupid, so I get MC because of that, and I get put around the corner here, so I mount up, and I, if you guys can see the, the priest HP, he's getting really greedy to get the kill on the monk. He doesn't top himself, and that is GG. Like, he, he should have topped himself there. I choose to stun the rogue there instead of the priest. Uh, just so my monk can top himself off. I think it was probably worth it in the end, because I'm going to get the kill right now. And there's not much. A full leg sweep onto the monk, uh, onto the priest here. And that's amazing. I've got like a 50k, 34k necrotic strike, which is basically two ticks of his penance. Amazing. I uh, gripped him off my monk there, and we're going to pretty much go for the kill now, guys. Priests just get, they're so squishy, guys, and there's nothing he could have done. I uh, pet stun him there, and kill. GG. So I, ha I think if you can take care of the rogue, I think that you completely counter um, assassination rogue versus the druid. Now here I play this matchup in the early parts of this match very, very well. As an unholy DK, you want to keep pressure up, okay? So keeping pressure up means you're using your pet interrupts, your death grips, and your mind freeze to stop heals. So let's just watch what we do here. I grip that heal there, and I stun him. He trinkets my stun straight away. I still have my pet, um, I still have mind freeze available here, so I push in. You want to keep your enemy healer in range of you. To do that, chains him and pull the DPS towards the enemy healer. You want to always be in range to, my, to mind freeze him, to pet kick him as well, so that's very, very important. Right now, his, his, the rogue is too far away from the druid. The rest of the druid sits a full leg sweep. I'm very surprised we didn't win this game in the early parts. So, alright, watch how we keep pressure here. So, I'm pumping this Rook. He's very, he's in big trouble here with Wei. So, Druid's gonna start pumping heals into him, and it's so close to a kill. So, I grip that heal so that I can actually be in range to Mind Freeze the next one. I wasn't in range to Mind Freeze. So, Death Grip, interrupt the heal. Mind Freeze, interrupt the heal. The Rook tries to drip me off the edge here. I know exactly what he's doing, and I stop right on the edge, jumps right back up to me. That's fine. I had Dark Transformation here, and I'm looking to... Uh, I stun the, ro the Druid there full, and I'm looking to pet kick the next heal. And then following that, I have Mind Freeze available still, so we're still constantly putting pressure on this Druid. Boom, pet kick. And I have Mind Freeze up now for the next um, for the next cast. Now, this guy didn't juke me once, so I'm actually kind of like juking... I'm, I'm kicking quite early on. I do have 220 MS, by the way. He gets Song of Chi Chi there, which is amazing, but he gets a clone off on me, so it kind of... You know, kind of like rotates it there. So now, from this minute on, he starts to juke me. And he has a dirty double juke on me uh, a bit later on. But we constantly keep this... this um, I AMS the, the clone there, by the way. He tries to clone me there, and I AMS to keep it up. He will start to juke now, and it, it fucks him up a few times. But then I get used to like his rhythm, and I just don't even bother kicking him at all. And he's left his juking for like, the entire duration. So... Again, like the ro the Arms Warrior Mist Weaver combo, the Rogue is constantly 30% HP due to just disrupting the rest of the Druid's heals. Uh, kick him there, which is really great. Again, he's struggling to get heals off, and he chooses to clone me here. I grip that clone, and right now I have no means to stop any clone that he's going to do on me. And again, Rogue is just so low. I don't know how he, he almost died twice in the early game of this. And honestly, he deserved to die because we outplayed them so, so hard. So he's trying to juke now, and I, he jukes my mind freeze there, and I set a full clone. So I didn't expect him to start juking like at the end of the game, and that's why it kind of threw me off. But that's one thing you should kind of realize that you need to adapt in the middle of the game. And after this double juke he does on me, it's, I don't fall for it ever again. So, again, keeping the druid, again, look, he's constantly chains of ice. He's in range of me. He tries to get max range. 
I, and when he is, I, I stun him or I grip him in. That's that's my main or pet kick. So I have three means to stop him from being too far away, which is great. So he jukes my pet kick and then jukes my mind freeze. Pretty dirty guys. I got I got screwed pretty hard there, and I kind of ruined my amazing initial part of the game. But uh, dampening is a forty percent, and this rogue is running away from me, so it's looking good. Swap on the on the druid here briefly, not for too long, and we're going to get some. We're going to get him to run away here. I don't think he burns anything. Actually, he does. He burns Baskin, which is going to basically mean well, the reason why the rogue dies or loses. They lose the game here. So the rogue's going to jump down, as you can see him over there. He can't even move with Chance of Ice. I have to admit, Chance of Ice is pretty annoying, guys. So again, back onto the rogue, and from here on, we're looking for a kill. 100%. This has to be the kill. Huge damage on the rogue here. Now, I have... Dark Transformation coming up, and I have um, Apocalypse. Sorry, sorry, Unholy Frenzy in 20 seconds. So he tries to juke me here. Watch. He keeps trying to juke, 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 nothing. Gets sapped. Gets Song of GG, GG. That's why Song of is actually very strong against this kind of team because I'm not going to chase the rest of the Druid around this map the whole game. I'm just going to kill the Rogue. And that was an amazing combination there. And down goes the Rogue. Rip. So yeah, very straightforward game in the end. Not really any chance they had to beat us. Okay, so next we're playing against a Miss Weaver Unholy DK. Now, I'm going to kill this this, must, this Miss Weaver in the first 10, 15 seconds of the game. Now, watch how what happens here. I'm going to slow down for you guys as well. So, we, I'm walking up to him. He's trying to droop me here. He's just trying to like, we're kind of like dancing. I chains him and I move up. I Dark Transformation. I should Dark Transformation a bit later. Unholy Frenzy into Apocalypse. Now, he does respect the cooldowns and he knows how much damage I can dish out. Now, watch what happens here. He gets very greedy, and it's going to lead to his demise. So, huge damage out on him here. He has to respect it. Hasn't popped a single thing right now, as it is. And he chooses to uh, roll over there, which I stun and grip back. And I know his port is right there, and as soon as he comes out of the stun, I pet stun him, and he goes back to his port. I, um, I pop Death's Advance, and I run at him, and he lets me kick him. Now, watch what my monk does here. I kick him, Monk comes in for a leg sweep, and actually, sorry, not even a leg sweep, sorry, he just literally just rising sun kicks him, and he's dead. So, he was full stun DR, and we just completely annihilated him, guys. Gross. Gross, gross, gross. That can happen if you get greedy, and you I, you let the enemy DK kick you, so... Yeah, that was that was really funny. Now this is the last clip I'm going to show you guys, and it is very um, this match was was very intense. I think Ellie is disgusting, and this map was just not fun. So we are a little bit into the into the matchup, but it was a very long game. I think it was a six minute game. So the main thing you want to do here, as the text just said, is that you want to stop repents and you want to stop lassoes and hexes. So three things you have to keep in in control of. If you do it right, you can stop two of them at the same time, okay? That's the amazing thing about DK, and that, that, that already is amazing pressure. Now, what am I doing here? If a hex does go off, I have no means to stop it. I'm lining, I'm popping AMS, I'm playing defensively. Uh, you'll see here, Paladin does a decent job at living, but in the end, like, it's just not the best. So, the main reasons to stop Lasso is that Lasso is disgusting. It does so much damage, and if I've seen, Shamans can actually pop your healer and Miss Weaver in a lasso. So you have to use your pet kicks and everything to stop. He tries to juke me here for repent and I kind of learn his juking pattern. He jukes very early, very early on. So I'm getting good pressure onto the paladin here. And I got abomination down and like he, he sits a full leg sweep. So he's taking abomination and a full apocalypse here. And he hasn't used a single bop or bubble. So not looking too good for us. Now I go to pet kick. Um, I choose to pick the Paladin. I should have picked the Lasso there. It's a mistake on my behalf. And he's actually, the Paladin's not topping him off at this point. And the Paladin's roughly sitting around half HP this game. So you're going to see a few moments where my Paladin, my sorry, my Monk gets a full Hex or a full Repent and I have to play defensive. I think it's important to watch how I play defensively because a lot of DKs just put their foot down and try and like get the kill. So we'll see just now, but generally it's going okay. He gets a full hodge there and they're looking for a repent or a hex. And there's the hex. And I should have gripped that hex. Okay, that's just my awareness not being very good. So in return for that hex, I AMS and I'm spamming Death Strike. Okay? So you have to utilize your runic power when your when your healer gets into a CC. And then just look for how are they going to follow up the CC. Stop the follow-up CC so your healer can recover. 
again repent I kick the repentance with my mind freeze and I interrupt the lightning bolt from the shaman so we got some good pressure here full leg sweep and he bubbles interestingly enough I don't think he'd have to bubble there but he chose to anyway and so I'm, sw I'm swapping onto the shaman a little bit here and we're doing some pretty good damage the, the paladin's struggling to keep up both targets that's completely understandable one thing I don't do that well in this game is I don't kill the sky fury totems earlier on in the game which you haven't seen but I try to kill as many as I can so the paladin tries to repent my healer here I'm gonna grip this heal now watch what the shaman tries to follow up as well with the same thing I put him into a full stun as well and he's gonna come out of it with about 12k necrotic hex is going off and I mind freeze it so just stopping repent and hex as you can see there is gonna put us in full like foot down mode again I pet stun his repent like they haven't they've tried three attempts at getting the CC off and I've stopped each and every one of them unfortunately the fourth attempt they get through I have to AMS and play very defensive here I have to stop the shaman's damage at all costs or I'm dead I pet kick the lightning lasso which is the reason why I live I might have got to about 19 or 15k HP if I didn't kick that lasso because the, the cocoon was coming but I would have got very very low and now we are uh, we've traded cocoon and we're pumping this paladin right now so this is amazing and we're in a good position of the game so again same thing it's keeping him under control and I have a, I can put the paladin to a full stun unfortunately I get frost shocked here and I have to trade asphyxiate so he doesn't top himself off I'm gonna um, lichborn you should definitely run lichborn against Ellie shamans nice cross CC going on there uh, the, the shaman gets sapped and this paladin is struggling to actually connect uh, lichborn stopped me from getting a stun there which is great and the paladin is struggling I grip that heal and honestly guys in the next few minutes the game should be done the power even the shaman's getting low right now gets a full repent off here which is quite scary but I have AMS and I am running uh, fat AMS as well so I even line some of the deep uh, some of the damage because there's no reason for me to take it he gets hodged here and I kick the lasso immediately out of the hodge uh, there's no reason for him to get to take damage at all so he's going for a repent here and I put him into a full asphyxiate or half asphyxiate. Storm Keeper goes out here and I see the Sky Fury Totem. That is a disgusting combination. A lot of damage comes out here. And my monk drops down to quarter HP in that, which is pretty gross. Grip the Paladin back over to me. And again, the, pal the kill is on the Paladin. And he sacked the Shaman just because I even looked at him for a few seconds. So now we're just going to focus on getting this guy down and just stopping the damage. The crane, crane damage is huge. He gets a full leg sweep again. The monk is playing very, very well. I think every one of his leg sweeps has been double leg sweep and it's just GG. Trinket this cap totem, pet stun, dead. So yeah, the, the leg sweep there was critical in getting the kill and that is going to be the end of the video guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed making these videos and I, it seems like uh, the audience that well, most of you that are watching are enjoying the content. Like I said at the beginning, I do have plans to make a lot of PvE content. I know it's been lacking on my channel. I've just been busy IRL and not enjoying all there as much as I should be. And M plus has just been not as not as fun as it was in Legion. So hopefully they improve that and they fix some of the affixes in the dungeons because it's pretty it's pretty boring right now, guys. PvP is just proving to be the best content in the game for me right now. But again, lots of content coming on the way. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter at MF West Wow. Give the video a thumbs up and tune in for more guys. Thanks for watching. Stay holy.